And the, um, here's a, a long question I kind of um, concatenate into three sections. How do you balance the use of digital gadgets and modern communication tools with the traditional practice of your faith and the teaching of Buddha? Mm. Actually, modern communication, yes. uh, IT system, mm -hmm. help to enhance their faith. Right. Okay. Now, even today I received a call yeah. from somebody from Texas. I have never seen that person. Okay. But the person has listened to my talk on Zoom. Mm -hmm. The Zoom system is another thing that we learn. Right, right. In the past, there was uh, Skype. Yes. Uh, now we have Zoom. Mm -hmm. Now some people use maybe both. Microsoft community, they have, you know, a yeah, large yeah, number yeah. of yeah, packages. Yeah. Yeah. So, people, are, when I, for instance, I publish books. Yes. Uh, many, many, many times people told me, by reading those books, they change their life. True. Actually, if there were no digital system, yes. uh, this printing books would be very difficult. Yes. Nowadays, you can see, you can see, you simply talk, yeah. and the word appears in the computer. Correct. Yes. Your voice, voice recognition. Yes. Voice recognition. Yes. Which, of course, is not, with me, it was not very successful because my yes. accent was mm. different. Yeah. It is perhaps made to American. Right. In England, they might have made it for English right. accent. Yes. And so forth. Yes. And since our accent is neither English nor mm. British nor American, mm -hmm. it is sort of uh, uh, not uh, English but Singlish. <laughs> <laughs> You made a term new one. Yeah, I, I, it's English. Yeah. yeah. And therefore, the digit, this uh, voice recognition doesn't work for us. Right. I mean, uh, technology is so highly advanced. Anyway, when we use the technology like this yeah. to communi make communication very quick, mm. written communication or just, uh, you know, digital verbal communication, yes. or audio books or video books or yeah. whatever, uh, but what you call e-book, yes, e-book, yeah, audio book, yes, a paper book, and so forth. Right, people begin to learn very quickly, mm -hmm. and then they begin to put it into practice. Yes. Now, actually, this is, this has become a great help to spread Buddhism very quickly all over the world. Okay. Yeah. You see now. You go to any nook and corner of the world, you can find Buddhists practicing yeah. Buddhism. Mm -hmm. we, are, we don't travel to go to, to those places, right. but uh, through the, the internet system, yes. communication system, yes. very modern right, right. system, yeah. yes. they learn all this. Yes, yeah. that's true. Um, also, closing on this question, Vante, uh, in your opinion, how has the evolution of communication technology influenced the spread of Buddhist teaching and understanding of Buddhism among people in different parts of the world? You did. I answered answer that, that question. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Tan Bande. We know that you had been extremely busy during COVID period, during keeping us and Sue busy. Yeah. Okay. Um, we like to hear about you, a great service to those of us who stuck at home. Um, you also, Bhante, you know, um, you, are, you are offering Dhamma talk seven days a week, morning and evening, and uh, also you had a large audience uh, needing to expand internet bandwidth, because here I think you had a very low bandwidth uh, network, uh, and then as uh, your audience started increasing uh, during the COVID period, because they got stuck at home, um, uh, so you moved from like a 200 uh, megabit per second to 500 in a steps, okay? Um, that's what I heard. Uh, you are still continuing, um, and we know that you must have been exhausted. Can you share any personal anecdotes or stories related to evolution of communication technology taking the COVID period? 
Yes, actually, during COVID period, yes. our Bhavana society closed to the public. Okay. And there, therefore, they were sort of de deprived of having the opportunity to meditate, yes. uh, learn Dhamma, okay. and have uh, Dhamma discussion with us. Right, right. And therefore, I thought <coughs> of uh, using the modern communication facility right. like Zoom. Mm. And then I, uh, somebody helped me. Right. You know, at the beginning, I did not know how to use the Zoom. Yes. You have to have an email, yeah. password, mm -hmm. and uh, Zoom, you know, uh, what do you call it? YouTube connection, right. live. Yes. All these things you can do. Right. I did not know them. Mm -hmm. So I learned some, yeah. all this from some, sure. somebody. Right. And therefore, using them, I started teaching mm -hmm. online. Zoom. So almost every continent, yeah. uh, there are people who are listening to our talks. Right. There are many other monks who are doing the same thing. Uh, I'm one of them. Right. I'm not the only one. No doubt. So this uh, uh, has become a great help yes. with the people who are who, who uh, invented mm -hmm. this IT system. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether they had any pre-knowledge mm. of what that could do right. to the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the past, uh, religions, uh, religious people sometimes become very fanatic. And then because of the fanaticism, there were religious wars, mm. killing each other. Right. Now you don't have to do that. Yes. <laughs> that is a big surprise. A big surprise. <laughs> yes. So using this digital system, yeah. uh, they can express ideas. Right. They don't send bullets hmm. to message. kill each other. They may send some words, yeah. express some unpleasant words, yeah. language, but it doesn't hurt anybody. Right. Yeah. Some people who... Yeah. Uh, most people are very intelligent these days. Yeah. Their IQ level is high, yeah. and therefore they know how to filter yes. what is necessary, what is not. Right. And therefore sitting in house, in their own homes, yeah. in a comfortable chair, right. uh, relaxing, they can listen to these talks, yeah. and then exactly. they can uh, learn yes. uh, wonderful things. Yeah. And you know, it is very easy these days because of this marketing system. Mm -hmm. You decide whether to buy it or not to buy it. Right, right. Same thing goes with the Dhamma, okay. with religion. Uh, nobody is going to force you, nobody is going mm -hmm. to reward you, punish you. Mm -hmm. uh, you decide. Yeah. You don't yeah. lose your. Right. Suppose I teach Dhamma mm -hmm. and. Uh, People don't listen to it. Yeah. I don't lose any financially anything. Mm -hmm. With their lesson, that's good for them. Yes. If not, it is yeah. up to them. Yeah. That kind of choice is there for the wide, very wide choice. Yes. Uh, is there for the people to make yeah. a okay. decision? Yeah. Thank you, Mandir. Let's move to the next one. How do you foresee future of communication technology impacting society and spirituality, um, especially in the context of Buddhist and your role as a monk? Yeah, I think <coughs> uh, certain area in uh, technology yes. is developing too fast. Uh, too fast means when you uh, say cell phone. Yes. You get a cell phone uh, in uh, in the past, you know, might it might take uh, a year mm -hmm. or two to have a new generation phone. Yeah. Now within six months it can come. Mm -hmm. When it when you buy one and start using it, 
before you get used to new phone, mm. another phone comes in. Right. And then uh, you are in limbo, right. whether to buy a new one, and they have, uh, probably they might have introduced a little brighter light into the new one, mm. that's all. Yeah. The features are the same as in previous. Yes, I but they have, their marketing system is so powerful, yeah. because there is a, what you call, even university, there are yeah. courses right. of Teaching. how to market. Right. Uh, so therefore they learn it, they become very skillful in that, right. and they keep promoting, pushing, 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 pushing right. through advertisements. Right. Uh, then uh, you, ca you can sell any lie, yes. any uh, trash yes. through the advertisement. Similarly, when this comes, you have to try, you are uh, tempted mm. to buy. And then what happened to the old phone, the right. only six months old phone? Right. So it is very, I mean, it is a very dangerous waste mm -hmm. of money, right. waste of time, right. waste of energy. Right. <laughs> and people, people are full of greed. <laughs> so therefore they want to get right. to something new always. Yes. That kind of danger is there. Yeah. And therefore, there must be uh, some kind of regulation yeah. to slow it down. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Then. Yeah. Uh, okay. How has the uh, information technology, this IT revolution, especially the rise of computers and internet, affected your daily life as a Buddhist monk, <laughs> both positively and negatively? I think I mentioned this earlier. Yeah, yeah, positively. Yeah. In the past, if I spend. Uh, uh, one hour to write a letter, yes. now I can write it in one minute, one minute. Yeah. And also because of this uh, a cut and paste system, yes. you can cut and paste or copy and paste mm -hmm. and so forth, you can do it in the same letter, yes. uh, or you can CC, yes. CC to people. Right, uh, so they will get the access. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Suppose I have a board, board, board of directors, 15 yeah. of them. Right. Instead of writing letter to letter. each person, yes. you write one letter <laughs> and CC to others. Mm -hmm. It goes That's 30 right. seconds. Okay. Great. Like that communication becomes very quick yeah. through the computers, mm -hmm. in email and so forth. Uh, the disadvantage yes. is uh, sometimes Children can abuse it. You know, they play okay. computer games, video games, yeah. and uh, uh, they spend, they don't have time to exercise, mm -hmm. they don't have to play with other children, yes. no uh, social contact, uh, they develop uh, various type of diseases, mm -hmm. you know, obesity, yes. diabetes high blood pressure, cholesterol, yes. they stay in home, right. and they have no way to, mm -hmm. you know, exercise. Right. Also, they can do sometimes, uh, uh, you know, they can uh, make, they can have uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, and then they mm -hmm. make friends. And sometimes uh, they, I heard, Sometimes they say that they see a, a boy sees a very beautiful girl and he wants to physically meet and marry. Mm. When you go there, you find an old man there. <laughs> Ask him for money. <laughs> Ask him for, he's trying to kidnap you. Yeah. Yes. You have to pay the ransom. The ransom. <laughs> so, that kind of deceptive. Negativity. Yes. They can deceive people. Yes. Cheat people. Yes. And also, you can get a junk mail. Yes. First, they say, congratulations, you won $10 million. Come and collect it. Yeah. First, you send me a social security number. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And your bank account, we can de deliver it to your bank. You don't have to come. Yes. So you give the bank account number. Yes. They can wipe it out. Right. Yes. This kind of uh, tricks yeah. they can play on you. Yeah. And another thing is, you know, some computers, they send virus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bugs. Yeah. Your computer is completely down. 
for days and days and days. Now I think there are various antivirals. Yeah, uh, malware and so yeah. yes. Of course, one thing uh, which I'm not trying to promote one type of computer, yeah. uh, but Apple computer. Yes. They don't have virus. Yes, correct. Correct. Yes. And so uh, these are, you know, negative, negative downside. Yes. You see, computer is a very wonderful tool, uh, friendly. Uh, some computers are really user-friendly computers. Mm -hmm. But if a virus comes, you have a full yeah. headache. Yes. For days and days and days, you have a problem. Yes. Yeah. True. Okay, uh, next one, Bhante. We know that you are the most traveled monk preaching Buddhism, mindfulness and bhavana practices with flu uh, fluent language skills in Pali, single English, Tamil, Hindi, Japanese, and managing various other languages. And you have established Dhamma group in Sri Lanka, Australia, Singapore, India, and other places. In your view, what are the most significant advantage of IT revolution for the broader Buddhist community? such as improved access to teaching, online meditation, resources or global connectivity among practitioners. Actually, that is very good. There are online courses. Right. Online meditation courses. Yes. Uh, online meditation lessons. Yes. And just like these days you can learn online anything. Mm -hmm. Biology, chemistry, yes. physics, yes. mathematics, anything. Psychology, yes. philosophy. Yes. Languages, mm -hmm. grammar, yes, anything you can learn, right, online. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, if somebody is interested, they can have online uh, credit and degrees. Yes, they do have. They have this, yes. degrees. Yes, uh, they are recognized. Yes, uh, uh, degrees. Yes, uh, this kind of advantage. Yes. Yeah. And also teaching Dhamma, yes, uh, is uh, this is very very uh, uh, meaningful tool. Mm -hmm. uh, people, you know, this what you call solo practitioners. Yes, they don't have uh, someone close by to talk, discuss. Using this communication system, oh, they, can. they can talk. They can have yes. online retreats. Yes. There are online retreats. Mm -hmm. uh, they stay in one place. Yes. And retreat, they don't have to uh, hire a place or That's have right. a physical place. From their home or wherever. From their home. Yes. Yes. Just like this Amazon. Right. Amazon business. Yes. They don't have, uh, they don't have uh, warehouses. They don't have uh, overhead charges. They simply have customers. You can be uh, Amazon cost, Amazon uh, agent. Yeah. Amazon, I had order a book. Amazon communicate you. You have a stock of books yeah. in your home. Yeah. And uh, they find a closer mm -hmm. uh, agent. Yes. And then they deliver it immediately. This kind of uh, business you can do on mm -hmm. online. Yes, that's one thing. Uh, the next one, Bhante, on the flip side, have you observed any disadvantages or challenges associated with IT, like distraction from spiritual practices or issues related to misinformation and disinformation online? All right. Uh, yes, uh, you can either use it or abuse it. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. If you, you have to be smart to use it yes. rather than abusing it. And therefore, choice is of, uh, in you. Right, right. Uh, dhamma, you know, if you misinterpret Dhamma or disrepresent Dhamma, yes. then there will be thousands of other people mm. who, who point out that you are wrong right. because they can immediately uh, go to the internet yes. and see it, or enter Tipitaka. Yes. For instance, when I was <coughs> giving uh, Zoom talks, I mentioned the name of a sutta. And then 
immediately you can see in the chat box somebody typed that sutra where it is yeah. in which book which yeah. page which sutra number yeah. and so forth immediately yeah. so you cannot cheat people Correct. you cannot give wrong information right. they can they can find it yes exactly if you interpret it uh, incorrectly mm -hmm. they can find out correct interpretation yeah. according to available sources right they can find correct right. interpretation yeah. yes and how do you navigate the potential pitfalls of digital communication such as the spread of negativity or uh, divisive discourse and maintain the core principles of compassion mindfulness and wisdom in the on online world i think that also is a very good if you tell stories yes very beautiful stories that arouse your metta Mm. Living friend, yes. your compassion, your joy, your your equanimity. Uh, you can tell stories, just like when you give a sermon in person. Uh, to you give a sermon in person to uh, hundred people. Online, you can give million people. True. Remember, we had a discussion with uh, Bhante. But the right last year or year before last year. yes last year I heard two million people only yes watched it yes correct the, now by now there may be more than that yes so it can be the communication can can reach wider audience yes large number of people yes a longer distance mm -hmm. uh, very quickly yes and. Uh, Make all this available very quickly, yes. easily, but yes, yes. in a very short period of time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. But can you uh, reflect on the impact of technology on younger generations' perception and practice of Buddhism? For younger generation, also just like Sunday school, right? Sunday Dharma classes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember the, uh, uh, there was a monk here. Yes. He had Sunday Dhamma class in Sri Lanka, about ten thousand miles away. Yes. You don't have to oh. be there in person. Right, right. All you have to do find out is the time factor. Yes. Uh, you are not on the same time line. Yes. And therefore, uh, you have to f find the uh, local time of that particular country mm -hmm. to. Communicate and children yeah. will be there. Right. And uh, it is uh, your your picture is there, right. your voice is there, yeah. uh, your material presenting material like PowerPoint presentations right. and so forth. Yes. Uh, all these things you prepare in advance yeah. and present it. It yeah. is exactly like you are in the in person uh, teaching them in person. Right. Okay. So, so not only young, yes. adult, yeah. old. And all no age, age limitation. No age limitation. Yes. All walks. Yeah. Of, of life. Okay. Yeah. Uh, tackle on, tackle one question, Bande, on on that. Do you see any generational difference in how IT affect their spiritual journey? Now, those who are very slow, yes. like old people, right. might like to uh, see a person in person, mm -hmm. in front. Right. Uh, hearing is not very clear. They have to ask, oh, "How is that? What is? Could you explain it to me?" He right. can ask to clarify it okay, okay. in person. Right, right. When you do it through the through the IT, it may be not repeated, and yeah. therefore it is little disadvantages right. for the yeah. elderly people. Yes, uh, younger people's Uh, comprehension is very quick, uh, hearing, mm -hmm. uh, comprehending, and processing, because their mind is very fresh. Yes. Uh, so, more advantage is for the younger ones okay, than elder, elderly people. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And the, the use of social media has grown exponentially in recent years. How has it shaped the way Buddhists engage with their faith and What opportunities and challenges does it present for promoting mindfulness and compassion? 
And so I said, uh, I think we answered. Yes, the, briefly. The yes. Question. Yes. Uh, mindfulness is something that you can develop it in yourself. Right. Uh, whether you learn it, uh, a, a teacher face to face, uh, or from online uh, internet. Uh, Instruction can be given either online right. or in person. But in person instruction is one to one. Okay, yeah. And also, uh, one to one instruction you can give online uh, because it's communication can break down. Yes. Sometimes, if the internet doesn't work, yes. depending on the area, yes. <coughs> sometimes in this area when there is a storm. Uh, power failure, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot communicate. Yes. Internet is down for mm -hmm. several days. Yes. Uh, that is the disadvantage. Yes. Uh, but uh, teaching meditation for actually for any uh, practical purpose would be better mm -hmm. if we do it in person rather than. Right, right. We can give overall general instruction right. online, yes. but uh, deep, personal, experiential discussion you cannot do online. Right. Bhante, you're going to hear a few more questions on the same wavelength, okay? Yeah. Uh, those who are doing the online meditation. Uh, Bhante, many people... Um, now turn into meditation apps and online resources for their spiritual practice. What are the thoughts on the tools and how do, they, how do they compare to traditional methods of meditation and mindfulness you have used? That's what I said. Yes. Traditional way is teaching in person. Right. Face to face. Yes. yes. That is more mm -hmm. uh, effective. Yes. But online teaching, you can do it impersonal. Right, right. And uh, you cannot uh, go into all minute details. Mm -hmm. Because when you have yes. uh, in-person discussion, you can ask thousands of questions. When I answer a certain question, right. uh, if it is not clear, you can ask me another question and yeah. so forth. Yeah. So personal uh, communication is uh, very effective in meditation. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, given your experience, how do you balance the benefit of IT, like global reach out and education, with the need of, for solitude, con contemplation, and retreat in your practice as a monk? You see, for the solitude, you don't need any of these things. Right. You just turn That's off true. your computer, yeah. turn off your, put your cell phone or airpo airport, yeah. uh, what do you call mode? Mm -hmm. Yeah, airport mode, isn't it? Yes, airport mode. Airport yes. mode, yes. Uh, or turn it off completely. Yeah. You would need total silence. Yeah. You don't need any telephone, any computer. Yes. Anything. Right. It is isolated, total uh, practice, right. uh, seclusion practice. Right. Uh, so no communication. Right. So internet doesn't. It is, it is totally yeah. useless. Right, right. Yes. In the yes. practice. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's an airplane mode. Airplane mode. Yes, sure. Uh, and the, are there any speci specific technology related experience or even events uh, that have had a pro profound impact on your personal journey as a monk, either in a positive or negative way? I think. You know, my attitude is to yes. pick the first, the best, right. positive things. Yes. I can e easily ignore the negative. Okay. Even in persons, yes. when I associate with a person, yes. I always look for the good side, right. positive side. Okay. Not negative, I completely ignore it. Right. Okay. The same goes with in using internet. Mm -hmm. All the negative things I ignore. Right. Uh, so I, it helped my... Uh, spiritual practice. Yes, yes. You know, all depends. Like, you know, our bodies, bodies are neither good nor bad. Mm -hmm. 
you can make it good or bad depending on how you use it. Yes, ma'am. Like money. Yes, ma'am. The properties. Mm -hmm. They are neither good nor bad. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you use them, yes. they become good or bad. Okay. Internet okay. is exactly like that. Mm -hmm. You can use it for good purpose. Yeah. And you can do a lot of business. Right. Online. Right. Uh, online jobs. Yes. Uh, so many things you can do. Yes. At the same time, you can kill people. Yes. Using online, mm -hmm. uh, giving wrong messages, yes. uh, sending uh, uh, wrong information. Yes. You can even make people sick and kill. Right. Depending on how people you get. Yes. But then nowadays, many young people are working in the IT sector. However, what uh, what is evident is uh, is that due to the unhealthy habit driven by uh, today's fast-paced lifestyle, individuals are falling victim to various diseases at a young age. Provide them with as many tips as possible to lead a healthy life, Bhante. So they are see, oh. these days working from home yes. has become a very common thing. Right. Uh, so people can uh, prioritize their work. Right. Uh, how much they how much they need to rest? Mm -hmm. How much time they need to exercise? Right. How much time they to use they use they can use for work? Right. I think if they work eight hours, mm -hmm. sixteen hours they have mm -hmm. to rest and exercise. Yes. And they must learn how to use. But most of the time, people they work eight hours and use 10 hours for unnecessary things, using the same uh, mass media. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. watching unnecessary TVs, uh, movies, yeah. uh, junks, yeah. and uh, wasting their time. Right. And therefore, they, as I mentioned earlier, yes. people must use their intelligence, their IQ, yeah. to select what they should do, yeah. what is beneficial, what is not. Mm -hmm. They have to decide it. Yeah. Can you share, Vante, any type of uh, meditation that they can conduct while they stress out, you know, for a few minutes? I think we, we always recommend very simple yes. meditation. Right. When you are working, yeah. even in office, mm -hmm. uh, or in, at home or in office, wherever you work, you build up tension. Yes. Naturally, you build up tension. In order to release that tension, you have you have a break. You sit in a straight, upright position. Okay. Close your sit or stand; it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what position it is. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes and focus your mind and breathe very slowly, very slowly. To breathe fifteen times, no, five times per minute. Normally people, I heard people breathe uh, 16 to 20 times per minute. But reduce that uh, amount of breathing to... Slow breathing. Breathing slowly yeah. to five, maximum six times, not mm -hmm. more than that. Mm -hmm. So that you will build up, you bring a lot of oxygen and a lot of carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. When you breathe out and empty your lungs, you have a lot of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide also is important to dilate our arteries, the arteries. veins, arteries, yes. capillaries, yes. which are the tubes. Mm -hmm. The tubes must expand mm -hmm. for more blood to flow. Yes. That expansion of tubes takes place only when there is a lot of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is as important as oxygen. Yes. <laughs> so when you spend two minutes, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, five times ten, 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 ten breathing. Yes. Deep, you take deep breath, slowly breathe out. Again take slowly, breathe slow. 
letting your diaphragm go all the way down to the navel, behind, below navel, and breathe out, pushing diaphragm up, very as close to lungs as possible, and then you have 30 seconds inhaling, 30 seconds exhaling. Right. Or 10 seconds inhaling, 10 seconds exhaling is the best. Yeah. So that you can have uh, six inhaling and exhaling per yeah. minute. Right. You do it two minutes. Okay. Then you open your eyes, you will feel very, your lungs are expanded, you can breathe, you can hold your breath, mm -hmm. and uh, you feel very fresh. And the brain gets a lot of oxygen during that time. That is a very good exercise, okay. Thank you. good meditation. And during that time, if you want to be more meditative, yes. Become aware of the changes taking place. Every breath you take in mm -hmm. comes as uh, air waves, mm -hmm. tiny, minute waves of air. Air is not something solid. It yeah. is a, it, it is a, it is a collection of air waves. Yes. Vayu tarang. Yeah. 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 And you can see them changing. Yes. You can see them changing. You can feel your feel changing your feeling, yes, your sir. perception, your yeah. thought, your consciousness. Yes. All are changing at the, you know, uh, such a imaginable, unimaginable speed. You see, that is the awareness of impermanence. Mm -hmm. That's a meditation. We pass on a meditation. Yeah. Thank you, Mante. And as someone who works in a heavily distracting world, someone working both online and offline, it would be interesting to know, Mante, thoughts about how Buddhists can navigate this kind of information overload and maintain focus. I think you should meditate. Yeah. You yeah. should meditate. Yeah, okay. Samatha meditation or vipassana meditation. Okay. Samatha or vipassana. Samatha or vipassana. Samatha is focus your mind only on one object yes. to gain concentration okay. and make mind very calm and peaceful. Yes. Your personal meditation is using that concentration and peaceful state of mind to see yeah. the changes taking place in a subtlest stage, subtlest level. Okay, Mante. Right. Thank you. And considering the rapid pace of technological advan advancement, how does you see Buddhist Buddhism involving our adapting to these changes in the future. Are there aspects of technology that may align with Buddhist principles? Yes, I think, uh, as I said, uh, Buddhist principles, yeah. the, the heart of Buddhism is the Four Noble Truth. Yes. Noble Eight Fold Path. Mm -hmm. Now, technology shows that technology is not something permanent. Right. It is changing. Yeah. Uh, and that is a part of the Buddha's teaching. Right. Impermanence. Hmm. You see, only today, psychologists, scientists began to open their eyes yeah. to see the truth of Buddhism. Correct. And that is why more and more educated people are becoming Buddhist. Right, right. Without our involvement, yes. without our teaching, yes. they themselves on their own mm. see the, the Buddha's teaching is, uh, is, is uh, uh, going along with the scientific investigation, right, right. scientific method. Mm. Uh, so, technology helps them to learn Buddhism better. Yeah. It's not going against it. Yeah. Thank you. This is the last question, Bhante. Um, <clears throat> this is from a millennial, uh, works online, offline person. Uh, the person says, I'm a heavy user of the 
wake up app uh, summoned by the name of Sam Harris and other app re, uh, called Balance that provide the gu uh, guided meditation without a heavy religious focus. Okay? With the prevalence of virtual meditation groups and online teaching, how, does the, uh, how do you Bhante, perceive the authenticity of these apps compared to in-person gathering? Okay. Now, Buddha did not teach a religion. Right. Buddha just taught the truth. Truth, if anybody discovers, uh, will go beyond religion. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, uh, my view is uh, meditation is the way yeah. to cleanse our mind purify our mind, mm -hmm. overcome sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair, yeah. put ourselves on the right track and liberate ourselves from suffering. Now, these things can happen when you have in-person communication. Right. Through okay. technology, you cannot get it. But technology you can use to collect information yes. and uh, you can process them through the practice of meditation because when it's any, any scientific uh, investigation yes. is not something permanent. Yes. You have to do more investigation. You, you, you know, in this generation, yeah. you do a lot of investigation. So yeah. many millions of people yeah. do all sort of research and research yeah. and they are not conclusive. They have come to certain conclusion. That conclusion is not a conclusion, yeah. conclusive conclusion or yeah. final conclusion. Yes. Then they have to do some more research yes. and so forth. Yeah. Dhamma is not like that. Mm -hmm. Dhamma is final. For instance, when you say impermanence, you cannot make impermanent permanent no matter how much science you learn, yeah. how much technology you have. <laughs> You can never make impermanent permanent. Even if you attend Buddhahood, Arahanthood, you cannot make impermanent permanent. Impermanent remains to be impermanent. And therefore, <coughs> technology helps you to understand the final ultimate reality. That you cannot learn it any other way. Yeah, thank you very much, Mante. You're welcome. Right. Uh, so, these questions should, should provide a comprehensive view of most venerable Hainapal Gunratana Theros experience and insight into the evolution of communication technology and its impact on his life, community and spiritual journey. Please follow bhavanasociety.org website to listen to regular Dhamma talks by venerable Hainapal Gunratanas in addition to the YouTube and Facebook. We worship and thank most wonderful, Mr. Enopal Gundratana Thero for sharing with us his experience and understanding of the evolution of communication technology and its impact on his life, community and spiritual journey. At the same time, we wish a happy and healthy life for Bante and we look forward to sharing life's experience with such discussions in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for the support from Ceylon X team, um, Institute of Electronic and Electrics Engineers members and 8 studio team in Kalambu. Thank you.